Okay, this is the first set of videos that talk about Revit and how we take our models, 3D models, from Rhino into Revit and how we create the site. Okay, so the site of intervention, as you know, is um, this building, is the, the volume of the interior we we shaped in Rhino and we were doing interventions on that model. But now it will be necessary to create a bit more of the windows and the roof and things in Revit. I will say that these videos are uh, complementary to what we're talking about in the workshops in class. And um, we're gonna be talking about the very basic things in Revit in class and that these videos might have some things, some steps that are a bit out of the ordinary or a bit more experimental. So it's this section of the videos with you know these steps that we're following together, what we're talking about in class is what will shape an overall understanding of Revit. Okay, so let's start with the very basics. Um, and again, it's mostly about the site, then we will uh, deal with interior components. So. I do want to say that I have some, you know, I create a, a folder, I call it Revit tutorial, but you probably want to say it's Revit steps or whatever it is. And then I place my Revit mo uh, Rhino model, the project base, the one we're going to be working. And later on, we're going to be working with your selected uh, projects. I have two of them. You might have three. Those are the ones that you should kind of detect in your panel number one and say this one I like and that one I like for whatever reasons. It's up to you. Uh, I also have the image of the site that you probably used already um, with the north orientation. So we're going to use those things a bit to determine the north orientation in, in Revit. Okay, so first step, what I'm going to do is just a new model. Uh, again, models versus families. We should be talking about that during class. We're going to use a model here. Pops up this window and you have some basic settings, but what we're going to do is just to browse and, and start with a default setting, okay? Open, okay. The default setting is a simplified version is how we used to work back in the times. Um, so default setting sets some floor plans, level one, level two inside, ceiling plans, level one and two. We're gonna be splitting these things in class and instead of elevation. So when you double click on each of them, it will open up the window, pops up another one here. You can close those and figure out how that works in terms of opening and closing and so on. If any of these windows are closed by accident, you can always go to view and here under user interface, just make sure that either properties or project browser are checked here. So that's the way you will go about it. These elements, be careful with them. They mark the elevations, so don't delete them. Be careful when you move them. If you move them, you should select both of the things and move them, not one of them. It's basically like a section plane looking in that direction. Okay, level one, level two, and side. Typically, the side view is the one that you will have things oriented to true north, what is called. And then the other ones will be oriented to project north. It's basically the best way to work versus how the reality is under side view. Okay, so what we're going to do is in Rhino. Open Rhino. We're going to export the project base. And we're gonna export it as a particular file that allows us to insert it into Rev. Okay, so let's go and do that. I open the project base, it, you know, you have some dimensions and so on. I will probably clean this up a little bit. So I probably save it as and just make sure I only have the project base. Let me put that under Revit tutorial, random models, and here to that one. And then let's just uh, delete some of the things that we really don't need. You can delete these things with no problem. 
as long as you have the model, you can also select the model and just directly go to File, Export, Select it. We typically help in selecting things as Illustrator from the top view to create line drawings. But here, what we're going to do is place here another folder and put something like uh, Revit Mass. Okay, there we're going to say, well, I don't want uh, DWG, I don't want uh, Illustrator, I want SAT. Okay, so that's the format that speaks quite well with Revit. So we're going to call it base mass and say, okay, save. We're going to set the defaults, okay. And then what we're going to go is go back to Revit uh, and do one thing. It's just file, new, and there's this conceptual mass. This should be one option that you can get. You can access that one. If you don't find this one, I will place it on Canva so you can have it as an access but I think you should have it uh, available to you. Okay, once they open, this is a, you know, a space, another kind of space within Revit that allows you to model masses, basically building forms so you can work with those. Probably it's a better way to work in the world of architecture, not so much interior design, but I think it could be useful for some things. So this is also, again, like not the classic way of starting knowledge of Revit. That's why, again, during class, we should talk, we should be talking about the more conventional ways to deal with Revit. But nevertheless, we're going to go to insert, import cat, and we're going to select we're going to select the file we just um, exported. So let me go with a little messy here. Courses three. And uh, really mass, and now it's looking for DWG, so we want to just make sure it's SAT here, so we can see that. Make sure it's origin to origin, so basically we'll go to that little point. Say okay, comes up, and this is the mass of your file. I'm going to Control S and save it, and I'm going to save it also under Revit mass and RFA is a Revit family type. Okay, so I'm going to call it. Again, maybe something like project base. Okay, say okay. That's good. And then we just need to load it into the project. This is a, a way to load um, families into a project. So this is a family, and this other file is actually a model or a project. So we need to take these things into the other one. And this might sound a little weird in the beginning, but that's basically going to be common sense very soon. So load into the project. It will automatically go to that level one or whatever you were. And if you don't have the other project open, you would just uh, basically escape. It's trying to place that family. You escape, so it does not uh, introduce that model. And we will like, I would like you to try to go to the side view, double click on side, go back to architecture here, say component. This, what it does is remembers the last family that you inserted and it tries to place it. Why are we doing this? Because the side view has this blue triangle and circle. That's actually the origin point. You don't find that under the level one or two. So you click there, make sure you have that magenta snapping point, click once and escape. Don't place more than one. Okay, so it's a quite large building compared to where the elevations are. So I'm going to move elevations. Again, select the whole thing and move it. Just step on top of it. Wait for the move little uh, symbol to come out and place it up here. When you click on the triangle on the bottom of that symbol, you should see that line as well. Okay, so I'm going to do that for the four of them and place them where they should be. We can see that this is okay now. We can look at the form from different angles, like elevation. We can double click there and see that. We can adjust a little bit the levels. And we again, we will be talking about levels quite a bit during class. Click 
click on the I'm clicking on that small circle take it out this is the typical place that you will go and place your levels at and you might need to do that with uh, the different views okay so this is a typical thing that you need to do a lot is like cleaning up levels so they look nice and they're where they're expected to be okay you can also go to the little dog house they call to see how those levels are in 3d and you can see the volume and you can move whether it's with this little toolbar or you can just press shift center button of the mouse scroll in and out and then select stuff be careful not to move it because again we're in the zero zero um, relationship we shouldn't move this at all so we can go to level one level two side view so one of the most important things that i want to do is uh set the the north orientation before i do that notice how many windows are i've been double clicking every time you double click you have another window it's important that you kind of clean up some other windows here by closing active views and only the views of different files will be open in this case the 3d of the conceptual map which we can now close and just have one view of the project which is the default setting here okay so let's set the true north so in order to set the true north you need to be on the side view here and you need to work with the manage option here and set location and position so first location well where are we so if you click on location you're going to be able to say philadelphia And notice how you can travel around and even potentially go to the particular address if you want to so ideally you have the most accurate address you can insert here the address um, Philadelphia PA so I'm going to just use Philadelphia PA as an option and say okay so that would set this the sun calculations that are needed to make this um that's good. Location is a very important one. So it's not the same Philadelphia than it is Boston than it is, you know, um, Orlando, whatever it is from different coordinates, makes a different sun and shading calculation. So but that's one thing. The other thing that is fundamental is to set the true north orientation. So when we go to position, we're going to have to rotate true north. Okay. So I'm not going to do it yet because we need a reference or some help here, an image. That allows us to understand where the actual true north is so to do that i'm going to go to insert and if you don't have it now um you have to get that print screen of your site the one that we used last time if you you can always just get it back and go in print screen on the site element on google maps and then place an image it doesn't matter how big it is that what matters is to know what is the building that we're dealing with which is actually this one and and understand how we can rotate this world the world of gravity and accommodating this north to north orientation so the, the best way to do is basically annotate and create a, a couple of lines so you have detail lines here and you can just step on the corner as we did almost in rhino click basically we want the you know the orthogonals or organization of that drawing once we have that we don't even need the image anymore we can move this, which is basically go to modify and move, or you can say MV, which is the shortcut. Two keys to move things, MV after selecting and move it from here to the origin point. Okay, so we have those two. Now we can go to manage and rotate to north. Okay, now in order to do that, <laughs> another step we're missing, escape that. We need to go to the properties and say, well, wait a minute, orientation should be set to true north. 
Okay, so this is a very important step. Say apply. Once you have done that, yes, we do uh, position rotate to north. It pops up the rotation kind of a option, and we need to say, well, where is what going? So we know this side, click once, goes to here, click twice. Okay, now we can delete the, the two lines that we created, and that is indeed a true north orientation. Now, to be very clear, the true north is what it's doing is orienting the building in the direction of the true north or the actual real north. So the shadow shading calculations are going to be adequate and accurate. Okay. So uh, at the same time, we like to work in a specific way so that's why we can jump and say orientation to north we can sometimes take it to project north and apply and that will take it back but this is this doesn't mean that the north has is changing is that this is the way we would like to work but this is the actual way the shading uh, calculations are going to be delivered okay typically the side view is set to true north and level one and other levels are set to project north, okay? So that's that. With that in mind, now we can be confident that the sh shadows of the building are properly uh, delivered and that the sun settings can be changed uh, the way we want them to be. If you want to still view under, notice the location has been changed and the dates that you want, and you can change those parameters and the shadows will change according to those parameters. Okay. We will be talking more about that uh, soon enough. Okay, so that's a bit of the first step. Uh, the second video about Psy will be a bit, you know, more uh, modeling the roof, the walls, the windows, etc. Et okay.